All right, guys, uh, short video on just to look at the difference between Prusa, a slicer, and Cura, both in terms of code efficiency. An annoying feature in Prusa where it snaps objects to the bed, especially when you split them out, which had me running around the houses trying to figure out what was wrong. So, Control I, bringing the part I want. I'll leave it oriented where it is. I'll split out the parts, select the outer shell, click on editing, layer and perimeters. So I want a top layer, this one's going to a tip tank. Oh sorry, this one goes down to z uh, zero for the bottom layer, and top layer one as uh, three. It's going to be thick, nothing at the bottom, right? Slice it. You get this error. Uh, object name, blah, 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 print Z, Z axis, layer, empty layer detected. Um, it's caused by negligible small extrusion, blah, blah, blah. Right. Bit of a misleading statement that. Yes, there could be a line missing out of here somewhere where there's nothing. And uh, it is on people on Thingiverse have stuff up here that doesn't have full mesh stitching on some areas, but that's not the problem with this particular model. Uh, what it is, if I just zoom out there, look carefully. Everything looks good over here. This is joined to this, but look at this. There's a gap. And why is there a gap? This bit is actually normally at the top. So it shouldn't. What it's done is it's snapped that component to the bottom, which seems to be a feature stroke bug. It should be up in the upper layer. And you can't move it either. You try and move it, stays down the bottom. You cannot move it up to the top. So, lots of talk on the internet about this. It's been going on for quite a while. Well, you can imagine the easy fix for it, can't you? Let's just select everything. Just invert the logic. Uh, control I. Same part. Flip it 180. So it'll snap and drop to the bottom, but this time it'll end up in the right place. Uh, let's rotate that around. It's just more efficient to print, I would imagine, when it's running the head that way or that way, uh, rather than running back and forth diagonally. I tend to prefer it to do that. Uh, right. So that's all selected. Uh, split out the objects. So this time that object will snap to the bottom that you can't see within there. Select the outer shell, which is this one. You can see it's highlighted. Layer and perimeters. So what I want to do, I want this bit where the tip is, the bottom, to be three layers to be thick. And the top, I'm going to have a zero. I want it to be hollow here. And slice it. No errors this time. All right. And you can see, yeah, it's at the bottom and it's where it should be. Effectively, it's at the top of the of the model. Ah, <laughs> all right. I'll need to fix that bit. But <laughs> I've just realized I didn't have the whole thing snapped to the bed because I can see <laughs> that I must have rotated it not quite 180 degrees. But it's no big deal. It, it, it will work. I guarantee it will work because I've already started the printing on one of them. And you know, the brim, but I can see the brim isn't landing in the right place. Uh, Cura, let's do the same thing with Cura. But Cura seems to, although you don't have to split the objects out um, with Cura, but it handles things differently and better, I'd say, in some ways. Again, I've already got the settings good to go. Top layers of three, because this one, remember, is going to be the top. I don't need to rotate this one. And everything, and uh, bottom lace, zero. Slice it. But what I want to show you now is the difference in the G-code and how efficient Prusa is compared to... Uh, right, so let's have a look at this one. Yeah, okay, let's rotate that around a little bit. So a butcher's inside. Right, there we go. Yeah, so... And it's this little fillet 
this little fillet, this spy, if you like, here, that is staying at the top, it's not snapping to. And the reason it's not doing that is because, well, I haven't split the objects out. Okay. Now, um, I saved these two files. This is the Prusa one, and this is the Cura one. And if we have a look at uh, how many lines of code, this is the Cura one. And uh, the lines of G code amount to 48463. Right? Look at the Prusa. 33, 924. Big difference. Let's look at the file sizes. Cura properties 1.37 meg. Huge. Prusa 837k. Well, 40k. Give or take. So, massive difference in terms of efficiency of the code. And that's why I said all along that I think Prusa is more efficient. But it does have that little quirk. Um, so, that's the takeaway from this is, if you stick with, this is the same thing printing now that I sent this earlier. Uh, and it is is flat on the bed. And this one is indeed 837. It's going to take, okay, 50 minutes plus the 21. So, 1 hour 10. Similar to what Cura is I'd say similar although I am running at I think a slightly slower speed um, 50 millimeters per second rather than probably 60 in Cura uh, but in terms of code efficiency that's that's a huge difference and uh, in terms of clarity I do find that the settings within Prusa once you've got them all you retract your extra prime and everything else I've already covered in previous videos once you've got this set up it works beautifully so uh, anyway Good luck. Catch you later.